So today we estimate there are roughly 780 million women who do not have access to formal financial services. And they are now overwhelmingly the very poor, the very rural, or those living in quite remote um, areas. We tend to talk about digital financial capability as opposed to, to literacy, because that really does seem to be the, the, the breaking point or the, the, the turning point when a woman feels really comfortable using the services when she finally feels at ease with that phone. So the, the, there are a couple of things that we've seen over the years that really do work. Getting the training as early as possible, as early as the age of five, seems to be when children start to really in incorporate those lessons into the way they, th they think about other life problems. So building that lifelong understanding of, of finance and the importance of finance and numeracy. One other thing that just seems to work, regardless of culture, regardless of country, is learning from a peer. So, you know, people who look like you have a life experience that's, that is similar to yours seems to be an easier transmitter of some of these concepts. We've done some work in both Bangladesh and Cambodia where we've seen that the, the, the women who are trained by other women are much more likely to use a product that a bank or a uh, mobile network operator is, is offering and use the full uh, capabilities of those products if they're taught by another woman. We saw that they were able to sign up people for accounts at a higher rate. They were able to have higher rates of sign up to actual opening an account. The account balances that were maintained in those accounts opened by the women, both by men and women, were higher. If there was a loan associated with the account, it was a higher repayment rate. And the women agents were better at cross-selling products. Mm -hmm. 